Did you know that there's a formula for selling art? A formula so powerful that if you can meet the requirements of the equation, you will not be able to keep up with the demand for your work. I used to think that selling art was kind of random, a beautiful thing that would happen once in a while, like a shooting star or a rainbow. Certainly not something I could predict or plan on. But then I stumbled into the formula, like Einstein riding his bike and getting struck like lightning with the E equals MC squared. I wandered into this beautiful art selling formula and I have been watching artist after artist have wild success with it. Success as an artist is not random and it's not luck. Okay, well, there's some luck involved, but as my friend's dad said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. The beautiful thing about this formula is that you don't have to wait for the stars to align and the full moon to fall on a Tuesday on a cloudless night in June. Are you ready to hear the formula? <laughs> Welcome to The Josie Show, where it's artist to artist chat about making art and selling art. I think artists should get paid for the beautiful work they put into the world, and I'm here to help it happen for you. Enter the formula. There are four parts. In a nutshell, they are your unique voice, your access to audience, having the right price, and excellent customer service. These four parts are not necessarily sequential, and you will continually be adjusting each component as you grow as an artist and as an art business. Let's tackle them one by one. The first part of the formula is you. You are telling a story as an artist and as a human. Other people want to connect with the story of your art and the story of you. It is not enough to just have a random person fall in love with a random piece of art. That does happen, but that does not happen enough to create consistent sales. That was what I relied on for years as an artist. And during those years, I was also a waitress. You can tell a story with your art by being consistent with your work, by creating collections, by getting very good at your craft, by making your art more and more unique to your own expression. This happens over time, a lifetime in fact, but you can accelerate the process by disciplining yourself to create a niche. This is the most fun part about being an artist and this is why you started off doing it in the first place. The second part of the formula is finding your audience. If you're telling a story, there must be someone you're telling it to. When I realized I could connect with an audience over time via social media, my email list and my website, my sales grew and became consistent. Social media is a powerful tool, but also occasionally exasperating. It changes all the time. The algorithm can feel like it's out to get you and it can take a tremendous amount of energy to do all the posting and blah, blah, blah. That is why besides social media, I also spend quite a bit of effort to get people onto my email list. When they're on my list, I am not beholden to the algorithm. They can unsubscribe, of course. They cannot read my emails, of course. But as long as they're on my list, I have a much more reliable connection to them and a way to share my story. The third part of the art selling formula is pricing. You are running an art business. You might be thinking that you just want to sell stuff to offset the cost of your supplies, but I want to get everyone to the place where their art is offsetting the cost of their vacation, their car, and their kids' college education. The right art price means the price that is attractive to your collectors and also ensures that there's a generous margin on top of your costs. If you want a worksheet on this very topic, you should download my pricing guide, which will help you out a lot. You can find it at josielewis.com slash pricing. It's a complex topic, but here's a quick tip. Having the right price is rarely because it's cheaper. That works with paper towels, but pricing with art is a different matter. Download my worksheet to learn more. Fourth part of the equation is fulfillment. Sigh. We all want it. Doesn't it sound great? In a creative business, fulfillment means the process by which the art leaves your possession and enters the arm of your collector. If you are selling through a gallery, they mostly manage the fulfillment. If you are selling in real life at an art fair or an open studio, you will want to have some sort of packaging to send the art home with, like some bags or tissue or whatever your art needs to make it safely 
home. If you are selling online, you'll have to think about shipping. You will need to have some boxes and bubble wrap and a way to buy postage. I know artists that absolutely flat out refuse to sell online because they hate the shipping process so much, but a little planning can make it delightful and exponentially expand your audience. These four processes will take a lifetime to tweak and develop. They happen in tandem with each other and trial and error is required. However, finding your unique path inside each category is very possible and all four working together will result in a thriving art business. Of these categories, what are you great at? Where do you need the most help? Do you think there are other pieces of the formula that I haven't thought of here? I'll meet you in the comments.